Hey, what is up, guys? Klausnex here, and welcome to the KX Podcast, episode 11. So today, I'm going to be doing a little bit different of a podcast. Usually, I'm spewing facts at you for 45 minutes, but today, I figured I'd do something a little bit different. Uh, I'm going to talk about my own experiences and a little bit about my journey. Not that I've successfully come to an end and achieved all of my goals and dreams, but I've just been reflecting a lot um, about the choices I've made and why I've made them, and uh, I think that this just might be interesting. Um, Just some housekeeping before I get into it. I just wanted to let you guys know that if you're listening to the podcast and when I look at my analytics, a lot of people give up on the podcast like one or two minutes in, uh, and I appreciate your view, right, because I get the view out of that, but at the same time, it's, it's showing hey, this guy has a 45-minute podcast, people only listen for a minute, it must suck. And then it just like buries the podcast in the the YouTube algorithm. It will never see the light of day if people don't actually listen through it, you know. So um, I was just wondering if you didn't mind supporting your boy. If you don't find it interesting, you still want to support me, you don't really want to listen to the whole thing, uh, just leave it open in the background or put it out like on in another tab and mute it or whatever because uh, the longer you listen through the more it helps my channel and the more it makes my podcasts available to a lot of people because otherwise YouTube will think that it's garbage and it will bury it even though I have so much to offer the world (laughs) okay there's I'm done I'm done plugging myself within the first two minutes of the podcast Uh, but yeah let's get that out of the way Okay, let's talk entrepreneurship today. It's a fancy word, and it's becoming more and more popular. Now, if you listen to the first podcast, I talked with my friend Muhammad um, about legacy, but the whole thing that brought me and Muhammad together as friends was this idea of entrepreneurship. So I just want to expand a little bit on that, and I think it may explain why I've made some of the decisions that I've made in my life. So, and this even comes down to like, me making that critical decision if you watch my video called the hardest decision I've ever made you know me deciding whether I was gonna go uh, personal training or gym teaching it all comes down to entrepreneurship at its roots so what is an entrepreneur an entrepreneur is somebody who uh, I guess you could say self-made they they sell sell something of themselves or their own product or services to the world and other people buy it So the cool, magical thing about entrepreneurship is that you don't need to work for somebody else. You can kind of run the show. And a lot of people like that. A lot of people don't like running the show. It's a lot of pressure. It's a lot of stress. And they'd rather just have a boss. They'd rather be told what to do. Not that that's a bad thing. I just think people are different. And they they function the best under different environments. And uh, I think it's good for you to recognize what kind of person you are. Not that entrepreneurs are... A special breed of human and they have so much unique to offer the world no we're just wired a little bit differently so looking back where did this all start for me so it's easy for me to think well personal training you know I want to be self-made but I think it actually goes back a lot farther than that it goes back to elementary school just reflecting here um, <laughs> I, as a kid, I loved comedy, and I loved reading comic books. I read comic books all the time. I had so many. And, uh, you know, I was a big, big into art, even in elementary school. And I made comic books And in elementary school. I had these big printer sheets that my parents had an abundance of, and I would draw out these comics. Uh, I actually had a series, you know. I had not just one book. It, it was like I made a bunch, and they followed a storyline of this dude named Mr. Crabapples. I don't know why the hell I named him that. To this day, I don't know why. I think <laughs> because when I, like, being a kid, we had this big crab apple tree in the backyard. And I just thought, well, what a cool name for an apple. It's crab apple. I don't know, maybe at that time it was crab apple season. <laughs> I don't know. But anyways, this dude's name was Mr. Crabapples, which is very odd because it, they were very, very violent comics. The dude had, like, a machine gun in each hand and it was him just wiping people out but uh they weren't they weren't real people they were like manifested mannequins or something like that so i could get away with 
in my head drawing these things. It wasn't bad. He was a righteous dude, this Mr. Crab of Apples. But uh, <laughs> anyways, I made these comics and I drew them out, you know, just one take, just drew them. And then I scanned them with uh, my parents' scanner and printed out a bunch of them. Uh, Mom and Dad, if you're listening to this, thank you for letting me use all of your ink on my bad comics. I appreciate that. But, uh, you know, I mean, they, they knew that it was, obviously, you're just a kid. You're just doing dumb things. But, like, they're supporting me in a, in a creative outlet. You know, that's, in a way, it, it was a way of expressing myself and my interests. So, uh, I guess, when I look back on that, I'm going to try and remember that as a parent. That, you know, whatever they're doing discovering who they are as a person so me even doing what I'm doing in elementary school making these comics um, it still led to who I am today and how why I'm making this podcast right now it all started with Mr. Crab Apples so <laughs> maybe one day maybe one day I'll upload those uh, scans I'm sure I still have those scans somewhere um, so I sold them for 10 cents a comic why 10 cents a comic um for one, it's for, it's cheap. Everyone's going to give 10 cents. It's a dime. As a kid, I'm like, oh, it's 10 cents, whatever. But I think it's because I read this uh, book about kids that made comics and sold them. And they sold them for 10 cents in this book. So I'm like, I guess that's what I'll do. That's what people who sell comics sell their comics for. And then the first one I ever sold, um, I mostly sold to like people at school. I brought a bunch. I sold them to teachers. Thank you to my grade four teachers that <laughs> supported my comic series. Uh, and I remember being so pumped about selling my first comic that is dime. I like, uh, I, I put tape around it so that I kind of like, it's kind of like a laminated. And then I hole punched it so that I could like hang it and look at that dime. And I was so proud of that dime because it was something that I earned was something that I made, you know, something that I was passionate about. Someone bought it. And I was just happy to provide somebody else entertainment. And at the same time, I got to do what I liked, right? So I think that was probably the early stages of me having some kind of root in entrepreneurship. Uh, the next thing that I did, my next uh, ambition was I was out of elementary school. Now I'm in junior high. Okay, this is my next big phase. I made duct tape wallets because uh, as a young teenager, what is doper than having a wallet made out of duct tape? You know, when you have one for a while, the duct tape kind of wears out and they become pretty crappy, but as a concept, it's pretty cool. So I would, you know, I had my station set up, I would make these wallets, I had all these different colors of duct tape, and I got very good at it, you know, and these weren't just like, just a fold and duct tape like I had pockets made I had velcro ceiling you want to put coins in your duct tape wallet I got you covered I'm pretty sure I charged extra for the velcro strap yeah I definitely did but I actually sold a lot of them like I did pretty well and I loved it because I got to be artistic I got to express myself at the same time I got to give my product to the world and I knew that people were carrying these wallets around in some tiny way I kind of enhanced their lives I know it's a bit of a stretch these are just wallets here but you know this is me understanding myself so then uh, I guess that phase kind of ended but I remember maybe this was an influence for me but I remember uh, you know there's there's always the, the kids in, in junior high that are like trying to sell sketchy things uh, I had this friend who sold he was selling lighters and this is when jet lighters were becoming a thing where you just push the button and the flame comes out like a freaking torch which is super cool to a teenager and he was selling these things like crazy and I just thought man that is cool he's just he's selling them for like probably double what he paid for them and I just thought it was super cool now I guess <laughs> me having these roots probably a good thing I didn't get mixed up in drugs or anything because those those guys are all entrepreneurs too right they're selling their products for whatever kind of profit they're kind of self-made I, I guess in another reality if I didn't have the values I have I could have ended up being a drug dealer probably a pretty good one but yeah I, I didn't go that way fortunately <laughs> uh, moving on to high school in high school I went through a phase where 
I was, uh, like, I loved art. If you couldn't tell already, I was a very creative, artistic person. Um, I loved making art. And for a short phase, I was making art and selling it. Um, I had people that wanted to buy some of my art pieces, but I didn't want to sell them because I loved them so much. But I went through a phase where I made t-shirts, uh, I cut stencils out, and I sponged in paint in between. And I actually sold uh, a few t-shirts, and I made my own. I, pr I think I still have a couple of them now. Uh, yeah, so I did that. And then outside of high school... Uh, I did a couple art projects for a couple companies. Uh, they wanted some graphic design stuff done, like logos or whatever, or like an art, like a large art piece for one of their like presentations. I did a couple things like that. Um, and, and I never really connected the dots that like, hey, I really like to sell things that I make. You know, until just recently I'm reflecting. I'm like, wow, I was, I've been an entrepreneur since I was a kid. Never really realized it. So then, fast forward to more where we are today, I got into health and fitness. Like I really got into health and fitness, and I wanted to give back to the community. So I started my YouTube channel, I was volunteering my time coaching, and I wanted to give back. But then I realized that this health and fitness thing was becoming my life. And what I learned researching uh, what you know, what to do with your life, because I'm this is me, it's just it's like a kid out of high school trying to figure out what to do. Um, some very wise advice or wisdom I've heard is that find out what you like to do, whatever makes you happy, and then figure out a way to get paid doing it. That way you're not really working, right? And that really resonated with me. So I was really into health and fitness. At the time, I thought I wanted to be a phys ed teacher. Um, and so I pursued that for a while. But then I, I guess I just realized that if I ended up being a teacher, then... I'm under the I'm under the rules. I'm under the guidance. I could be the most kick-ass teacher for like 20 years, but like if I show up late or no show at class, you know, I'm still under the rules of somebody above me. It doesn't matter how successful or how well I do. I'm always going to be underneath somebody's thumb. And secondly, if I didn't grow, like if I wasn't able to grow, you know, there's always this roof over your head. Like as a teacher, there's only so much you can do. To progress yourself in your career, I guess you could you could always expand your reach and, and your involvement in the schools, like coaching teams and, and doing all these other things. But that wasn't really I didn't really like that ceiling over my head. So then personal training, which I just plan on doing on the side, I realized this is my passion and my love. So I'm gonna double down on this. And then at the time, I got really into Elliot Halls. Elliot Holes was selling PDF uh, workout programs, and I had bought a couple, and I thought, man, I can make these. Like, I know how to make workout programs. I can do this. And that was the birth of ClawsNext.com, where I started making workout programs. I was worked very hard on them, and I made some really great workout programs that I'm very proud of. If you want to see them, they're at ClawsNext, so my last name, Clawson, then EX.com. All my workout programs are up there. And I'm actually thinking about making a couple strongman ones, uh, if, you know, if the interest is ever there. But in any case, that became my next passion project where I wanted to sell my own goods. So I was making these workout programs. And uh, aside from selling a couple workout programs to friends, wasn't a huge demand for it. There still isn't a huge demand for my workout programs, but I'm very proud to, that I've made them and they're up there. And it's kind of a, a finished, polished product that's available to the public and eventually when I have my own gym that might be easier to sell if I can display them on a shelf but uh, for now they're just gonna sit on the website so from selling workout programs obviously got certified and started selling my services as a personal trainer so this is kinda where I am today and, and I've made peace with the self that I think I'm just always born to be an entrepreneur I think I just something in me just wants to be self-made. I don't want to have a boss. I don't think that I would enjoy myself if I had a boss. I want to be the boss. And, and I'm pretty open to like managing a gym and, and having all those stresses that come with it because it's worth it if I get to be self-made. So in the future, I, I definitely can see myself expanding this. Like I love to sell t-shirts. Like I'm already looking into kind of a, a 
personal brand clothing line. I don't have the money for that yet, but I'm doing my research. And then, you know, from personal training, the next thing I'm going to be doing is selling memberships in my gym. You know, it's just, it can just keep growing and growing. I could run some fitness classes. Eventually, I, I wouldn't even mind, like, becoming a someone who certifies people as trainers, running, like, classes like that, or, like, hosting lectures, because, as you guys know, I like to talk your heads off. I like to <laughs> spew facts at you, which is a rough way of saying be a teacher. And, you know, this just may have been the way that I was destined to teach. It wasn't necessarily in a classroom. It may be in my own gym one day to a bunch of new young personal trainers wanting to make a difference in the world. So I guess that's just a little bit about me. And I think that this all connects to legacy because I, I want to make something. I want to leave a footprint in the world and that will be my legacy, something that I've made. And this goes all the way back to me making comics in elementary school. I, I want to offer something to the world that I've made that will make a difference. And, and last more than a few years, you know, I want potentially a gym to withstand the test of time over the years, right? Pass it down through the family. There's nothing that fills me with more pride than uh, that. Yeah, and I think that it's definitely the the right time for it because our, our society is really, um, maybe you've noticed it, maybe you haven't, but it's a good time to be an entrepreneur. Like everything in our economy is fairly stable. And, uh, you know, it's becoming more cool, more popular to be an entrepreneur. And I uh, have some friends, or, like, I, well, aside from my personal training friends, but, like, people want to make and sell things. But it's just, it's this has a stigma that, like, this is an old stigma of entrepreneurship. If you're an entrepreneur, you're, you know, you're a loser. Like, get a job. Stop trying to pawn your stuff off on other people. But... You know, I have one buddy in particular. He's uh, he's making artwork, Melo D artwork. He was thinking about it, and then eventually he just went for it. And uh, you know, his, his stuff looks really good. And I'm really proud of him. And it's just cool to see that develop in a person. And uh, I think a lot of people have that in them, but they're just too scared of failure, or they're too scared of what the world will think. If you're listening to this and you kind of want to offer something to the world just do it you know people probably won't buy it it's not like i've ever been super successful as an entrepreneur i just like to do it and it it uh, satisfies me on a, on a soul level you know um but you it's it's a lot of work right i think that there's a lot of people that want to be entrepreneurs because we're growing up in a world where we can now see successful entrepreneurs you know like uh you look at obviously like Steve Jobs or Mark Zuckerberg or whatever, these people that are changing the course of human history. And they're, you know, they're entrepreneurs, they're self made. But, you know, it's also really easy to say, oh, I'm an entrepreneur, and put it in your Instagram bio and not really flip a single thing, not really sell anything. It's a lot of work, it takes a lot of research and dedication. But uh, once you find your niche, man, it doesn't feel like work. It just feels like you're having fun. You're just making money off of what you like to do. And I, when I take money for training people, I sometimes I like I kind of feel bad. It's like, man, like I I I enjoyed this training session. I am enjoy I'm, I'm enjoying watching you grow as a person and watching you develop. Like I can't take your money. Like I feel like it's not fair. Like I'm I'm happy to to help you and and, and watch you grow. <laughs> but that's just it, right? That's just the thing. Making money off of something that you wouldn't expect to make money from, making money doing something that you love. So, uh, I guess that's that's about all I wanted to talk about today. Um, eventually, I would love it if this YouTube channel would eventually get to a thousand subs, so that, you know, as you know, YouTube changed their monetization policy, so I was getting paid, and now I'm not. So, the goal is to get to a thousand subscribers, so that I, I can be monetized again, which would be super cool, and that would definitely expand my reach as an entrepreneur and an influencer. So, thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, I, as usual, I really appreciate your views, and I appreciate that you have stuck it out and listened through this whole thing. And uh, yeah, I mean, check out the rest of the channel, see what you like, see what you see what you missed, 
Give me some feedback. I want to hear what you guys have to say. Your opinions and ideas are valuable to me. And I'm going to eventually take my channel in whatever direction I think gets the best response and whatever I enjoy doing the most. So, bit of a different podcast, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. Stay tuned for more videos in the next podcast. Colossnex out.